What's the best way to lose weight? By making just small incremental changes or making big dramatic changes that hopefully will protect you against weight gain in the future? That's an interesting question that a new study looked to answer and kind of came up with some pretty unremarkable results. Let's take a look at these details because I think it can help us frame how we approach weight loss and behavioral changes. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and the study I want to talk about is called A Small Change Approach to Prevent Long-Term Weight Gain in Adults with Overweight and Obesity, a randomized controlled trial that was published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal. Now, actually, before talking about this trial, the setup trial for this, or at least the way they describe it, is what was called the SNAP trial. The official title is Innovative Self-Regulation Strategies, Reduce Weight Gain in Young Adults, the Study of Novel Approaches to Weight Gain Prevention Randomized Controlled Trial, which was published back in 2017. Now, this was 600 young adults, okay, so very important young adults um, who are not obese, did not have type 2 diabetes, did not have a lot of comorbidities. Their average BMI was 27, so overweight by BMI criteria, but definitely not obese. And they had three groups, either control group, a small change group, which were they were um, instructed to reduce their calories by 100 kilocalories per day and increase their steps by 2,000 steps per day, or what they called the large chain, change group. That was they tried to have them lose 5 to 10 pounds over four months, as they worded it, to protect against weight gain. Um, and what they did was reduce their daily intake by 500 to 1,000 kilocalories per day and exercise 250 um, minutes per week. And that was for eight weeks. And then they didn't really describe what happens after the eight weeks, but then I guess they sort of went back to the control group. But it was the question was, could this intensive period protect against weight gain? And what they found was interesting with compliance, 64% were compliant with the large changes, 75% were compliant with the small changes. At four months, there was a significant weight loss. 0 0.6 kilo, kilograms for the control, 1.4 kilograms for the small change and 3.6 kilograms for the large change. Okay, so makes sense that they would have done better. But the way the, the main outcome was the average weight change over three years. Um, and that still was significant of 2.1 kilograms for the large um, change group, only a half a kilogram for the small change group and a weight gain of 0.2 kilograms for the control group. But here's what's interesting is the average weight change over three years, it wasn't looking at where they started and where they ended because looking at the graph, they didn't really report that data as far as I can say, but looking at the graph of where they started and where they ended on average, it was less than the kilogram of weight loss. So pretty unimpressive for that too, but it was sort of interpreted as small changes can make a difference and can protect against weight gain with really being like one or two kilograms at most. So I guess for a large scale population, that's okay. But for an individual, most individuals aren't going to be happy with one or two kilograms. So let's fast forward now to the 2022 study. And what they did here was 320 sedentary, obese, or overweight adults. And the small change was, again, reduction of 100 kilocalories per day or increasing 2,000 steps per day versus the control. And basically at two years, there was no difference. It was 1.2 kilograms in the intervention group versus 0.7 kilograms lost in the control group. No difference in the waist size. At one year, there was a difference, interestingly. There was 2.5 kilograms lost in the small change group with the control group at 0.6 kilograms lost. So there was that difference at one year, but then it sort of came together at two years. Now, interesting conclusion that the, the control group did much better than expected, right? For a control group to lose um, 0.7 kilograms over two years with no intervention is pretty remarkable because most control groups will gain weight over time. So that's just, you know, we see that sometimes in, in studies, just being part of a study, you pay more attention to your lifestyle, even if you're not being coached on how, how to do that. Um, but the, it was, you know, again, underwhelming 1.2 kilogram weight loss in two years, um, with making these small changes. So how do we interpret this? Is it small changes aren't enough? You need to have dramatic changes or is it the, the small changes that are being offered, the advice being given is the wrong advice, right? The question of do you eat less or do you eat better? Do you exercise more or do you exercise better? That, that's not addressed in a trial like this. So it's easy to conclude small changes don't really work much. You need dramatic changes. 
or it's easy to conclude they're just giving the wrong advice. And of course, the other question that I always bring up is weight gain really, weight gain or weight loss really the best metric here, or should we, we be looking at, you know, waist circumference, body fat percentage, uh, metabolic health markers, you know, blood pressure, blood sugar, insulin, um, HDL triglycerides, all those, are, those might be better markers than just weight gain or weight loss as well. Talking about healthy weight loss, but again, you know, that wasn't measured in this trial. So, so the way I, I look at this though is, is I, I think it's clear we need to focus on eating better and exercising better and being more purposeful. And just reducing your calories is not a helpful approach if you don't focus on what you're eating, when you're eating, how you're eating it, what exercise you're doing, when you're doing it, how often you're doing it. You know, those are, are bigger questions, but it's a little more complicated advice, right? It's very easy to say just eat less. It's very easy to say just exercise more, um, but easy doesn't cut it. Easy doesn't help the individual usually. And then of course, there's the question of if you're losing weight, if you're losing fat mass and muscle mass, and then you just gain back some weight, are you gaining back the fat mass? So you're, you're a net negative there and not just returning to baseline. So concern about the cycle of weight loss. So that's why at Diet Doctor, the information we really like to try and help people get in the, the path we want people to go down if they want to lose weight is healthy weight loss, sustainable, healthy weight loss, not by just reducing your calories, but eating better. So eating better usually will mean reducing your calories, but doing it in a way that you're getting adequate protein, you're getting adequate nutrition, um, you're not feeling hungry. It's something you can sustain long-term and accompanied with getting adequate protein is making sure you're doing some sort of muscle building activity, um, you know, some sort of physical activity, uh, to help you maintain that lean muscle mass so that when you do lose weight, it's mostly fat mass and you're improving your metabolic health along the way. So that's what we really want to present here at Diet Doctor to help people achieve that. So whether that is small changes or big incremental changes, I think a lot of that has to do with the person, the individual. I think it's important to offer both routes to the person because some people want to jump into the deep end, right? And they want to go on a ketogenic diet and change everything. They're going to do fantastic with that. And some people are going to be so scared by that and so put off by that, that they just want to make small changes. So knowing who you are and having both options, that's why we offer ketogenic meals, ketogenic meal plans, ketogenic programs. And we offer liberal low carb um, and moderate low carbs. You could have, you know, less than nine, sorry, less than a hundred net grams of carbs or less than 50 net grams of carbs. Um, and with making sure you get enough protein, adequate protein, if not high protein on top of that to really combine a powerful one-two punch. And people can do that with small incremental steps. But like I said, but if you're the type that likes to go all in, then by all means, go all in and make big changes because you're likely to see some impressive results when you do. Then the question is, does that have to be sustained? Because here's what's interesting. I think the diet or the lifestyle that gets you to um, a quick weight loss and um, good metabolic health changes doesn't have to be the lifestyle you lead forever. For some people it is, and you do great with it, but for some people they wanna try something different or they stop seeing success on it. And that's when it's time to mix it up. And that's what we're gonna start building more of here at Diet Doctor, you know, not just higher protein, but more of the satiety per calorie kind of concept where um, when you're focusing on the right foods, you naturally eat less and can still enjoy your foods without eating diet food and, you know, still enjoying fat, protein, and the right amount of carbohydrates for you um, in a way that works for you long-term for your metabolic health. So anyway, that was sort of my take home from these two studies. Um, and I think it reflects, you know, very differently on what we're doing here at Diet Doctor, not just focusing on reducing your calories, but focusing on eating better, making better choices in ways that you can sustain and enjoy that are good for your overall health. All right. Hope that was helpful. If it was, click thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll see you next time here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube.